Benvenidos worldwide fans of cinema. We are here for a special 2016 edition of In Fuego Tainment and I got Cecil Laird here with me. What's up man? What up? Thanks for having me man. I'm so happy to have you man and you've seen him many times on the show before but we have one of our horror show co-hosts that's going to be for some new ongoing coverage for the 112263 Stephen King Hulu series. This is from the horror show Miss MPH as I call her but you can call her Marsha Parker. What's up? <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me on. I'm so stoked to have you and uh, besides being an awesome insight on the horror show one of the reasons I wanted her for this is because she's actually read this Stephen King book that JJ Abrams bad robot has adapted into this Hulu series eight parts in fact and it's a ginormous mm -hmm. book Marcia that yeah. thing is like over 800 pages oh yeah <laughs> worth every page so you liked it then yes 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 I did um, and even seeing it come alive on TV I'm just gonna say they did a fantastic job really really hard to be successful in a Stephen King book to TV yeah. series. It's We've really seen some hard. really good ones and I'm sure uh, yeah. Cecil you've probably seen some bad ones too. I'm sure a few come to mind. <laughs> oh yeah there's there's plenty of bad uh, King adaptations mm -hmm. but for the most part they generally tend to be pretty good and this one was interesting to me because it wasn't one that I was really that interested to okay. watch yeah. especially because it's a period piece. Yeah, However, it's not scarific either. <clears throat> no, you know, no. It's not a horror book. But, uh, but it's been way more impressive than I anticipated it would be. Yeah. Yep. So this series that we are talking about once again is 112263 and the book is not even that old the book is less than 10 years old now so this is a yeah. kind of a timely adaptation and eight parts they can properly flesh this out I mm -hmm. think I mean anytime they try to cram a 800 something page king book into a movie it just doesn't work for me in two hours so this is nice that they're doing the lengthy storytelling but we're gonna do the Enfuego team of tropes guys we're gonna do the bueno the malo and the feo so something good something bad and something just ugly strange I mean Marsh is new to the proceedings but what being familiar with the book mm -hmm. and I haven't read it and I've been on this King quest for a while reading through all of this stuff and I'm so close to reading this particular book mm -hmm. but being the big fan I haven't read it yet how was it faithful first and foremost oh yeah they're doing a fantastic job I was a little concerned when I saw that James Franco was <laughs> the lead in this like if you ever read the book then you're like really like, did it not seem to fit? Would that be like a Malo type thing for you? A bad? It really or? didn't. It's not who I was picturing when I when I read this character. But I'll tell you this: he's doing a fantastic job. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's not. Did you not think James Franco was smart enough to be a school teacher? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. No, it he's actually a really all. intelligent yeah, guy. I'm yeah. just kidding. He plays yeah. these doofy characters, though. I mean, like he the does. stoner on uh, you know, Pineapple Express, yeah. and you mm -hmm. know, the mm -hmm. the idiot on the uh, what was the movie and. Uh, Oh goodness, North Korea. Seth oh Rogan. yeah, the interview. Yeah, so he, he plays the doofy guy, but so and yeah. he he played this character better than you expected. It would be a boy yeah. now. Yeah, you really have to sell um, his character. You can't just kind of wing it and kind of have fun. And it, you got to really you got to believe in this character. You got to really feel for him and watch him as he grows and the, and then kind of watch him like figure out different key sections and each thing and how to line everything up and even how they did the finale won't get too into it with the end of this show no spoilers really, no spoilers <laughs> i really they did a really good job because there's a lot of stuff that they skimmed over that you don't notice and that's really really hard to do when you're mm. telling a story this big is that okay what parts do you leave out what parts do you and i think they did a really good job it's of, a big judgment call right pushing it together yeah yeah so i mean bueno i totally agree i thought franco despite not always understanding his logic and maybe i'll save that for like a malo or a feo or something like that i thought his performance were good performances mm -hmm. as a whole were good everybody was pretty top notch and another thing that i liked that i know cecil also dug was the actual period the way everything looked these vintage cars i mean they recreated this time period awesomely right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and like i said at the top i i'm not usually a big fan of period pieces but i found Me after no. watching this <laughs> that uh I found after watching this that I was actually a bigger fan of what I was seeing than I thought I would be. I mean, it was nostalgic 1960 America, yeah. and it's like, 
oh, that's what everything was like when it was still clean. Oh. And like, you know, and, and they even make mention of the fact that all the food still tastes mm -hmm. amazing, you know, because it's not processed. Yeah, and all these additives chemicals and all this it. stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. That was really neat. The other bueno, rather, that I wanted to mention was something, I don't know for the uninitiated, if you wanted to give like a quick sentence about what it's about, because yeah. my, my bueno I was going to say that, that so. but uh, no, no, I mean, it's an awesome concept, and I think this is why people thought it was a King, you know, uh, story that needed to be adapted, because it's kind of thrilling, and it was, uh, I, I was going to mention this as my bueno, I love the concept, so mm -hmm. there's a time travel essence to this, essentially Franco's character is a school teacher who has a buddy who runs a diner, and apparently there's a closet in this diner that takes you to 1960, and not, and just to 1960, Dips and one day. particular day and yeah. time mm -hmm. in 1960, and so it's not like you got your DeLorean, you can go wherever the hell you want, mm -hmm. there are constraints to this time travel, and I mean, without getting too into it, somebody wants Franco's character to go back in time and avert a big turning point in not just America's history, but the world's history, probably, mm -hmm. yeah. from happening. Mm -hmm. So, awesome concept, and someone's so, trying to kill JFK. There we yeah. go. We'll just spell it out as and a part Franco of that. And Franco has to try and figure out bush. how to stop it. Yeah. yeah. So, Bottom line. so my, my bueno then, piggybacking off that, is there's changes that he can make, and apparently there's an aspect of time travel that he didn't know about that I wasn't anticipating. Yeah. I don't want to spoil it, but... Uh, uh, it has to do with pushing and mm. um, and about trying to change what is already set in history and consequences of yeah. those attempts to change it so mm -hmm. that was really cool to me it, it was it was very intriguing and I thought that was one of the selling points of taking not just a cool concept I guess maybe a, a concept that's been done before right. we've seen a lot of time travel films and but stuff like is, that this is a lot different on how time reacts to what you're trying to do mm -hmm. and also a big thing I like to point out because it's one of my favorite things about the fact that it is a time travel and it goes back to the same day but it resets mm -hmm. every time you go back it resets it doesn't matter what you do during that time period it doesn't matter if you go back because it just starts it starts over which leads to so. questions which may or may not be answered down the line no. seven more installments to find out yeah I mean yeah. does that mean that if you yeah okay anyway it's a lot of questions that, no, that but are, it's that just, are it's a that cool little asked. rule to have right so there's a lot of variables, a lot of cool stuff to cover. I mean, mm -hmm. great concept and lots of, you know, buenos abound, I must say. Mm -hmm. So now we'll segue into maybe some of the malo. I'll at least just cast my line out there first. Some of Franco's rationale, at least his character's rationale, you know, mm -hmm. there's this older gentleman convincing him to do it convincing him to go back in time. He's mm -hmm. uncertain about the idea and he does not seem very sold on it. No. And then just all of a sudden, something transpires and maybe it justifies the change in character enough. For me, it didn't work yeah. as well. Right, me was that Was I, that pretty closely I, in line with the book? Or? I agree with what you're saying and um, no, because there, in the book he goes back and forth a couple of times before he really settles like he's gonna go all, all ah, in. Ah, okay. And I think they try to show, because initially that So I guess that's feeling, a spoiler then, sorry guys. Spoiler in the book, he, he the takes books, a couple test yeah. runs, you know. Yeah. At first I got the same feeling like, mm -hmm. okay, they were just glossing over that part to keep keep moving in the storyline but when he went back to go spe like go to a specific date and time mm -hmm. to witness something it flat did a flashback of him having this in-depth conversation with his friend that was trying to talk him into it so i'm thinking we're gonna see a lot more of those flashbacks while he is there yeah i imagine that's gonna be to kind that's of explain, like the lost yeah. you know to like, explain, it was flashbacks like okay and, you know. he did say i've been here all night listening to all this crazy and now you just want me to go and do it so maybe it'll it'll reveal itself as we go why he changed his mind to actually do it or, yeah maybe so know. that segues into my model is the structure of it like I worry that it's going to break its own rules and it's the, That's the, the tough thing justifications aren't yeah. going to justify the actions that we're going to actually see, yeah. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, and, and that's also another model for me is that the, the way the guy tried to sell him on actually going back, I didn't buy into, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can give every argument you want about how, hey, if this person's life is saved, but especially if he knew about this push without going too much into right. it, wouldn't you think that maybe... There's gonna be a big push. A big <laughs> push and a big consequence. And so, I mean, just like in Back to the mm -hmm. Future, just like Terminator, all these other films that we love in pop culture that have just taken these rules and run with them. Yeah. We have another one that it's it's kind of teetering on its own mythos, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that's uh, a good segue into the Feo. Then something ugly, something strange, maybe that just seemed a little bit out of place. I know King has a little bit of grit to his storytelling sometimes. Right. 
but I felt like just the F-bombs, it didn't bother me as much as it just felt out of place, maybe. I don't know, but just to piggyback on that, to use your, your terminology, they do spell out something pretty ugly, pretty well. If you fuck with the past, the past comes and fucks with you, and mm -hmm. I guess that was one of the only times where I felt it was very just properly used. I don't know. Any differing this from the narrative, maybe the book or? I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. And I think it's because I've read the book <laughs> and enough. I understand a lot of the Easter well, that eggs. That bodes well for, for the rest oh. of the yeah. episodes for us. Yeah. Okay. She's I, I'm seeing a lot of Easter eggs that they're throwing out there that I understand that when you're reading the book, you don't quite understand it until yeah. you finally do. And I think that's what you're experiencing right now is kind yeah. of what I experienced when I was reading the book. Well, like, where is this yeah. going to lead to? He met because the possibilities are kind of Oh, like yeah. just out there. You met a number of ladies, and you know, you know which lady is gonna come into the fold. Because I know there's got to be at least a one love lady that's gonna of some sort. And then when he comes back, he's gonna realize that it resets, and the love's gonna mm -hmm. be gone. And it's like, oh, there's that drama they can play with if that's they tough. play with it. It's like like I don't even know. Don't I don't know. know if he's gonna make it back to the portal before the last episode. Yeah. Like, is he stuck the entire time, or is there a back no and spoilers. forth? Spoilers. There's a lot of good <laughs> questions, but but yeah. that's what makes this such a fun story, and it. It was such a fun read and I'm so excited to see it on the screen and I'm excited yeah. at the quality that they're doing it as well JJ Abrams, I don't, don't think, mess around I don't think that they would have been successful translating the story without the quality that they have now yeah um, that's something fair to yeah. mention in other hands it could have been ugly like bad ugly like not even watchable and this right. was very watchable very intriguing grabbed our interest and mm -hmm. yeah and you know the, the ugly I wanted to mention the fail for me was it was really interesting. It was it was one of those borderline good fails, but it's also bad in a way. And that is the show like blatantly holding up a 1960 mirror to us and showing us what our culture was like back then. There was a particular point where James Franco stops to try and use the bathroom when he's on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there's a, uh, a black gentleman walking out of this terrible looking rundown outhouse and he's like, oh, you're you's heading the wrong way, sir. Yeah. And he looks over his shoulder and there's a bathroom for whites that looks all nice. And mm -hmm. obviously the, the bathroom for colored people looks terrible and it's just like, Oh, that's right. There's that part of our past as well. Yeah, and it's, and it's, so that's a that's an ugly mirror to have to look into. Yeah. It is, and it's a reminder about how much changed in that decade alone. I mean, massive cultural shift. You have to have it if you you're gonna to. if you're gonna be true to the time period. No, one hundred percent. You gotta have all of it, and I'm excited. No, I, it was I'm true to it. I'm excited. glad you're excited. That bodes well for us, like Cecil was saying. So yeah. I get to extend the grande gracias to both of them for joining me for this. Uh, it's going to be an eight-part special spotlight on the show because I love my Stephen King, and it's on the in Fuego team at end as opposed to the horror show end because you know King does drama well, whether it's something like uh, you know Stand by Me, mm -hmm. which was adapted from a short story, or Shawshank Redemption, another short, whatever it may be. It's not always spectacular with him. Right. And but but was, keep your eyes peeled on our other channel, which we'll tell you about in a second, because there mm -hmm. will be some scary King coverage coming up as well. Yeah, now we're actually delving into his magnum opus, so uh, I will. We'll let him talk about that in just a moment. That's actually a program that all of us do together mm -hmm. when they're not helping me out with Enfuego Tame and being so nice. We're gonna let our our showrunner, the creator, Mr. Cecil Laird, sitting beside me. He's gonna tell you all about it. Of course, he's talking about The Horror Show, which we do on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's youtube.com slash the horror show channel or the horror show channel.com. And it's a horror variety show on YouTube that we cover uh, movie reviews, how-tos, comedy sketches, celebrity interviews, uh, con coverage, all kinds of good stuff. It's it's a literal variety show all circling around the horror genre. So check us out, guys. And then we've got our cohort today who is going to be a special guest for this entire 112263. Shout out for Rainbow, yo. Yeah. Where can peeps uh, interact with that crazy co-host on the horror show? <laughs> Hashtag Rainbow Rules, yo. <laughs> That's right. Get on that and uh, say what's up. And uh, she's always brandishing big battle axes and being crazed and all that fun stuff. And lastly, I've been Javier Fuego. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, always talking the hottest entertainment with an edge. So gracias once more, and we've got seven more awesome installments of this, which is way more than we typically get from Mr. Stephen King. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. These guys are going to be along the way with me. And until the next installment, adios, sin amigos, and I will see you later or whenever. Let's just make it soon. Ow. Peace.